The R7 200 series had just a couple of GPUs in the lineup, with the most powerful being the R7 265, but on the complete opposite side, you could find this, the R7 240, certainly one of the more powerful display adapters out there, but this is just a display adapter. After all, the 128-bit memory bus isn't that common in the low-end GPU market, and there are models of this GPU featuring GDDR5 memory. The model I have features the significantly slower GDDR3 memory, not to be mistaken with the models that have DDR3 memory, the slowest type of memory you can find of the R7 240. So almost 10 years after its release date, let's see if this pretty small GPU can even handle anything nowadays. And we are not too off to a great start to say the least, as the settings are turned down to the absolute lowest you can go, and the FSR feature is set to performance mode. Still, the R7 240 isn't close to providing playable results. I wouldn't even dare to try the game without the FSR turned on, as the FSR feature basically forces the game to run in 360p, and as visible, that's not really enough for the R7 240. On the other hand, while still at the absolute lowest settings, and 720p resolution, CSGO does run decently on the GPU, certainly not on a competitive level, but for some casual gameplay, this seems fine, and you got to keep in mind, this is one of the most demanding maps there is, so in my opinion, it did good enough. Continuing with the esports games, we have Overwatch 2 running just about shy of 60fps, the same settings as CSGO did, it certainly isn't perfect, but considering the GPU, I don't consider this as a bad experience, as I was able to play through a round without a problem, not really noticing any problems despite having heavily reduced settings and not so great frame rates. But on the other hand, I'm not really the greatest player, better players may notice the difference, but in my case, it's just fine. Returning to AAA releases, this time testing the Vulcan capabilities of the R7 240. They are not really great to say the least, with Doom Eternal essentially running at 360p, and you guessed it, all the settings turned all the way down. The FPS only gets to somewhat enjoyable levels when you look at walls, or areas with less detail, which are really hard to find in Doom Eternal. So needless to say, the game is just not playable like this. What is playable but also a lot less demanding than Doom Eternal is Third Rally 2, also running with heavily reduced settings. But the shader quality was set to high, since the game just looks so much better this way. But as you can see here, it's still quite enjoyable, offering 45 FPS on average. So finally, we found a relatively demanding game that can run on the R7 240, but is there anything else that can run on this GPU? Well, GTA 5 is also amongst the more demanding titles that can run on this GPU. Maybe even 1080p was possible here, just to keep it about 30 FPS. 900p is your best bet, with 720p providing almost 60 FPS on average. Admittedly, it's not the newest game. Still, it's always worth noting when a GPU can run GTA 5. And here we are again, lowest settings, 720p and FSR. Yet again, the R7 240 didn't stand a chance in Dying Light 2. That's not really a huge surprise, after all, the game is just too demanding for the GPU to handle, even the 20 FPS it offers is decent. And to round it all up, I do like to go back to a PS3 era title, to see whether the card is capable of running those games. And as you can see here, 2013's Tomb Raider runs just fine, even at 1080p, and this time around, you don't have to turn down the settings to the lowest values, you can even use the medium preset, and still get decent FPS. So for some of these older titles, the R7 240 seems to be a decent choice. After all the testing done, the R7 240 really fails to impress performance-wise, especially in AAA releases. But considering how this card was never really meant for gaming, it holds up relatively well, especially in esports games. Considering the price of just $10, and the fact that the card is quiet and doesn't require any additional power, the R7 240 does still have some appealing aspects in, even in 2023. Maybe for an old pre-built system with weak integrated GPU and a crappy power supply, this can be a decent choice. But for anything serious, I just can't recommend it. And I can only leave it up to you. And whether this is useful for anything, that will depend heavily on the price it's going for. For $10, this can be considered as a decent display adapter with a lot of power. But you shouldn't really pay more than that. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more interesting reviews in the near future, especially when it comes to low power consumption GPUs, so definitely consider subscribing. Hope to see you in my next one as well.